you can see this table good. Um, you know, I need to start remembering to like, move out of the way of the camera to let you guys see the whole layout so we can analyze it before we start. Uh, this was shot just a few days ago uh, on April 4th, 2019, and it's now April 9th, 2019. So this is current. Um, at first glance, this looks like a pretty easy table, but there's a lot of problems here. More problems than usual that we have to solve here. And particularly noted is this 7 and 8. Uh, getting from the 6 behind the 7 back here. Uh, there goes my monitor. I always forget, man. Sorry, I'm, I'm new at this. <laughs> I got to turn down the volume, too. All right. Uh, yeah, the problem is getting from the 6 to behind this 7 to shoot this 7 in this corner here. Um, so I've already decided before I start this that we're going to deal with that combination. But it is it is very, very tricky. Um, another problem here is I could cut this one ball in here and just go two rails and still keep it, you know, up table where I need to be on the 2. Um, but a better idea, if you ask me, and this is rare coming from me because I avoid banks and I avoid combinations, um, a better idea is to bank it and just kind of put a relative stop shot on it just to keep it right where the one is now. Even though I have only half a pocket, in my head I'm thinking if I make this bank I'm out. Um, but that's that's a little bit of deception on myself. Um, another problem here is if we come down to shoot the three in this corner pocket, we're probably going to get near the rail, and I'm going to have to put that top follow English on, on the three ball, which is going to send it further away from the four ball. So a better idea is to come up behind the three ball and shoot it in the side. Or we could come up behind it on this side and take care of that combination now with the three eight. Um, I like the other idea. Even though we're crossing the line of aim and we're hoping to get on the line of aim, uh, if we get anywhere around the line of aim for this three ball, I should uh, be able to easily get on the four. Another problem we have here is with this five ball. We're going to be we're going to be hitting the nine ball. There's almost no way around it. Um, so where's the nine going to go? The, the good thing with the nine is it's going to stop the cue ball. You know, somewhere around close to this rail. Um, for a straight in shot on the six. Um, the problem is where's the nine ball going to go? We certainly don't want to tie it up with another ball. But the three will be gone by the time we shoot the five, of course. So we won't have to worry about that. It should be okay. It should send it somewhere around the dot. So there's a lot of issues going on here. And some of them can't be tackled in, until we kind of get to them. We can plan this table, and it's always best, even if you're wrong, even if your plan turns out to be not right, it's best to start with a plan for the whole runout um, because you're not just planning the runout, you're training your brain on the right way to think about how to approach a table, a nine ball table. Comprende? So do it even if you're wrong. You have to have a plan, and those without a plan fail, as they taught me in fourth grade. I still don't have a plan for my life. This is it. I'll end up here.
Anyhow, let's bank this one and run this rack. Let's do it, Scooby. Yeah. I'm concerned I can see it in my tired face there. So, yeah, I'm going, we're going to put a little bit of draw on this tube ball to keep it on this side of the table. And just try to roll down for a shot in the side on this three. And that should... That should clear some of the tension that I'm feeling right now. I'm a bit concerned about especially that 7-8. I don't, I don't like it one bit. I avoid combinations even more than I avoid banks. I love banking, but um, not 9-ball or 8-ball or 10-ball or 6-ball. I used to love playing 6-ball. You know, it was a great thing. I started playing six ball when I was a little kid because we had we had Valley bar boxes even back then, and they were only a quarter back then. So now I'm really showing my age. And, uh, but you, you get there's 15 balls that you get you know come out of the table. So instead of playing one game of eight ball, we, you could play two games: a game of six ball and a game of nine ball. So, in my young, stupid mind, I thought I was getting over on the pool. I was getting more than I was paying for. So, that's what I did a lot. I, we played six ball, which I, I love playing six ball. And we played nine ball. And that's why I got good at those two games. We didn't play any one pocket. You don't play one pocket on a coin up a table. Although you probably could, it'd probably be a good deal because you know one pocket. I've seen a game of one pocket last over six hours, six hours for one game. Wake me up! What the fuck? Wake me up when it's over. Here. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting way off the point. We also used to play banks on on a, a bar box, and we would catch the balls. Um, because you're you're always banking back to yourself, you know. So you would just catch the balls before they fell into the pockets, and we got caught doing that, and we got yelled at. But you can make one game of bank last for hours too, or not one game, but one quarter. You play a million games for one quarter. So anyway, God, no, I'm rambling today, ain't I? Let's shoot the damn four ball. So yeah, it's gonna hit the five here, but it's gonna stop the cue ball from getting away, <clears throat> and it's gonna keep us. And it's all about where the nine goes here. Keep your eye on the nine. That could cause problems with this combination. And yeah, right back to the spot. So um, a lot of guys would draw down here. I don't think that's the right idea because you're gonna be cutting the seven into the eight. And uh, the cue ball is going to be getting away from you and going down table. And um, the cue ball doesn't have to stay at the pocket. It can, or the seven ball doesn't have to stay at this pocket because after it hits um, the eight, it can wind up pretty much anywhere on the table, depending on how hard you hit it. So this is all about knowing where the eight ball is going in the damn pocket. Um, but knowing also where the seven ball is going and where the cue ball is going. And if I'm going to be able to get from that seven ball back to the nine. So I want the seven ball in the place where I can get on the nine. A lot to think about. In these. That's why I avoid combinations. I'm not real big on thinking and that's why I don't play one pocket. I mean I am. I'm a thinker but I don't want to go out in the pool rooms and think. You know, it's like brain surgery. You just want to go out and do your thing, you know, at least me. But that's just me. Some guys like to think while playing pool. And you have to think, but you don't have to perform brain surgery. There's a line there, you know. A lot of guys play one pocket because they think they're smarter than everybody else. And maybe they are. But really, they can't. Some of them, God damn, I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, a lot of those guys can't play 8-ball and 9-ball and 10-ball. Um, 
and banks and whatever. A lot of a lot of one pocket players are good bankers, but that's it, you know. But they have a brain and they're smart, and so they play one pocket and they think that's their advantage in the world of pool. I'm sorry. Shut up, John. Be nice. Now, you can see I'm concerned here. Um, I need to know where this seven ball is going and where this. It's not just a matter of slamming this combination into the pocket. I have to keep. The, the way it's, I want to try to shoot the seven into this end rail and bounce out and squeeze the eight ball into the pocket. That's the plan here because that will that will keep the seven ball near the pocket while making the eight. I don't think there's enough room here to get the seven ball by the eight. In fact, I know there's not. Uh, but there is a way to make the seven ball by trying to squeeze the seven off the eight. You move the seven out of the way. That's not a good plan um, because where's the eight going? Brenda? Let's just analyze it. Here I am doing surgery. Yeah, see, I, I do not like this. I do not like this. It's got me turning into a worry war. You don't come all this way and dog the seven, eight, or nine. You just don't. You just don't, especially the nine. Don't. Don't ever do that. Do whatever it takes. So you see how I played that? That kept the seven near that pocket. Let's go back and watch that. And uh, I knew where the cue ball was going, and I knew I could get from there to the nine. Watch it again. Watch the seven ball. You see how it went off the end rail to squeeze the eight into the pocket? Practice that. It's a great shot to have in your arsenal because it comes up. Um, it doesn't come up real often, but it does come up. And this way, you know where the seven's going, you know where the eight's going, it's in the pocket. And, and you damn sure know where the cue ball is going. So here's the shot uh, we have on the 7 to get to the 8. And here's a big, 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 big mistake that a lot of players make. Um, they come up short on this 9 ball. And they ease up on this. They're trying too hard to get perfect on the 9. And they wind up coming here and here or back here or even on top of the nine, to, to where it's just impossible to do anything but play safe. You don't want to play safe on the nine. Um, you, again, you don't want to come all this way uh, just to screw up now. So what, that, what they'll do is they'll draw back a lot of them if they play like I, I, I'm always drawn. So my choice here is to draw back. But it took me years and years and years to get it through my head to 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 hit this ball, to shoot it, to to not try to you know tiptoe through the tulips here. You have to shoot this ball, and you have to draw it hard because it's better to come up long on this shot than it is to come up short. So shoot it, shoot it like the player that you are. And get up table. Even if you go long and down here, it's a whole a billion times better than being right here or right here. Um, so that's the big lesson. And a lot of guys go off the rail and they come back here, and now they got a real difficult shot in in the side ball room. This side, now that's the wrong way to do it. A lot of guys come up and bounce up and put English on it and come up here and wind up scratching. Um, just draw back, but draw back hard. Don't come up short on this. It's better to come up long than short. Shoot it. Don't, don't, don't try to be a surgeon here. It's not the time to be a wuss. That's what I'm trying to say. It's time to win. It's like that. Don't be afraid to go long. 
And just uh, this comes up a lot, shooting off the rail on the nine ball. Um, I don't know why I do this to myself, but I do it. Uh, it's not intentional, believe me. But the whole key here, the whole key as you're getting down on this shot is to tell yourself, look, this is easy. Just keep a straight stroke and stay down. People get nervous and they jump up at the end and their stick comes flying up. It puts unintentional English on it. And they miss the ball because they throw it with the English. And stay down. Take a deep breath. Keep the basics right. Make sure your stance is solid. And keep your elbow up. Keep the tip of your stick down. And, and just shoot it. Shoot it like the player you know you are. This ain't no big... Just tell yourself. This ain't shit, man. You've done this a million times. Just do it one more time. That's me getting a kink out of my neck. I have, I have shoulder issues and collarbone issues. And it gives me a thing in my neck that I have to kind of break loose. Because it knots up. So if you saw that, if you were watching my head, um, that's what I was doing there. I should stand back up to do that. But it's also make sure that my eyes are parallel with the table. You don't want your head cocked to either. Bad habit. Um, bad habit. You want your eyes parallel with the table. Um, if, if your head's cocked, it's going to be impossible for you to aim the ball properly. I sound like a third grade teacher lecturing her classroom. I don't mean to be condescending. I don't. I'm just trying to drill it into not just your head, but my head, too. I and mean, these, these are all great reminders for me. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I don't know what the title of this is going to be. So many issues came up in one rack. There is so much covered there. This is an award-winning video. So vote for me. I'll set you free. Hey, peace, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm heading out to poke Whitey. I forgot to turn this off.